Hi class. All right, we're going to go into language and we're diagramming compliments. I know as soon as I said the word diagram, some of you are about to probably hit the floor. I know some of you hate it, but I will tell my body, okay? Because I know it can be hard, but it's something that you need to learn. It might help you actually figure out and decode stuff. So, we're on page 284 in your language book. So digging for compliments. We're going to learn to diagram the four kinds of compliments and we're going to study these examples and I'm going to put them on the board and I'll talk you through them. Okay? So you have to first remember what a direct object is and that's on page 271 if you need to look back. You need to know an indirect object page 275, a predicate nominative, page 281, and a predicate adjective, page 282. You need to remember those four thing, those four, because those are the four types, excuse me, of compliments that you can have. So this is what the first one looks like. Okay, Tonto, Tonto won the race. And this is a direct object example, okay? So, Tonto, we know is the, sub the subject, and we know one is the verb. Well, one, it's an action verb, because can't you win something? So, that makes race the direct object. Because if you look at your sentence in your book, it said, Toronto won the race. And remember, the noun follows the action verb and receives the action. Well, race is a noun. It's a type of thing. It's not a physical thing you can touch, but it's a thing. And, <coughs> excuse me, also you could say, Tonto won what? He won the race. So race is the direct object. When you're diagramming a complement and it's a direct object, it's just right after the verb, you put a straight line and write the direct object. That's all you have to do. Okay? Then let's look at the next one. Look at this. The sentence says, this is the, when we diagram the indirect object, it says, the Lone Ranger taught the rustler a lesson. The well, Lone Ranger is the subject. That's what the sentence is about. It's about this Lone Ranger. The rest of the sentence is kind of like, what's he doing? Well, the action verb is taught. Because aren't I teaching you right now? Yes, I am. 
At least I'm trying to. So taut. That's the verb. Okay? Then you have the straight line for your direct object, which is the lesson. What did he teach? He taught the lesson. Now the indirect object has to go under the verb, rustlers. Because who did he teach the lesson to was the rustlers. Because it says rustlers comes between the action verb and the direct object. Because remember the indirect object is always going to come before the direct object. So it says the Lone Ranger talked the rustlers a lesson. So rustlers is your indirect object. It goes straight under the verb. I think kind of like was the adverb to do like that. But it goes right under the verb, the indirect object, rustlers. So you draw your own slanted line and then it writes on the line. So that's for your indirect object. So the line in front of a direct object, direct object is vertical. The line in front, and then, let's see, an indirect object is always diagrammed beneath the verb. It is diagrammed almost like a prepositional phrase, except that there is no preposition. Remember the prepositional phrase, you wrote, you wrote part of it, the, 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 the word, the preposition here, and the object there, I think is how it went. So it's prepositional, it's just like prepositional phrase. But this is the indirect object, this is the direct object. And you have to put that line there to show it's an indirect object. All right. Let's look at the third example it gave us. Okay. I know some of you are probably biting your nails now. Going, really, Miss Sewell, you're making us do this? All right. So, the third example on that page. Ranger is a hero. Well, this example is for a predicate nominative. And you notice the difference here, this line is slanted. It's not straight up and down. It's not vertical. It's slanted. Okay? Vertical's up and down. Slanted diagonal kind of. In case you don't remember. Alright. So, the predicate nominative is hero. It goes after the slanted line. Hero follows a linking verb, is. Remember a couple lessons ago we talked about linking verbs again? Is is a linking verb. Hero follows it. So that makes hero the predicate nominative. And that's why I told you you need to go back over those page numbers again to probably really remember what a predicate nominative is. So a pre predicate nominative goes after the linking verb, but it has a diagonal, a slanted line. Lone Ranger is the subject. It is is your verb. It's your linking verb. Hero is your predicate nominative. And it goes after that slanted line. Okay? There's one more example I want to show you before some of you pass out on me. Because I know some of you are going to say when you open it, you go, I'm going to pass out. Don't do that. Okay? I'm just copying some of you in class what you say. All right. Says Tonto is loyal. Well, this is the predicate adjective because loyal describes Tonto. Loyal is telling you that, that Tonto is a very trusting, very good guy. So, is is the linking verb. 
When you do a predicate nominative and a predicate adjective, it goes after the slanted line. This is a predicate adjective because it's describing Tonto. Tonto is loyal, and is is a linking verb. So, it is, let's see, follows linking verb is, and it describes the subject. Loyal follows is, and, and with is is a linking verb, and loyal describes Tonto. So, the line front of a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective is slanted back towards the subject. Slanted back towards the subject. Because it usually has something to do with the subject. Like the other one's hero. It was said that the Long Ranger was a hero. Predicate nouns and predicate adjectives are diagrammed exactly the same way. They're not put under the verb like an um, indirect object. So, Let's look at page 285. It says, take it step by step. Step by step, day by day. This is a TV show used to come on a long time ago called Step by Step. All right, think back. You will never find a subject, verb, or complement inside a prepositional phrase. It is a good idea to put parentheses around prepositional phrases before you even find the verb so that you are not distracted by them. If you need to remember what a preposition or a prepositional phrase is, go back and look on page 115 and 116, okay? Learn these procedures for identifying compliments. And if you can learn these five procedures, it's really gonna help you. Underline the verb twice. You guys know how to underline the subject once and underline that verb twice. Ask who or what before the verb to find the subject. Underline the subject once. Say the subject and verb together and ask what or who to see if there is a complement. See if the verb is an action or linking to identify the complement. Then four is two parts, A and B. A. If the verb is an action verb, the complement is a direct object. Remember, action verb is something you can do. Remember, if you can run, that's action verb. If you have a direct object, you must also look between the action verb and the direct object for an indirect object. An indirect object is a noun or pronoun which answers the questions to whom or what or for whom or for what. If the verb is a linking verb, the complement is a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. Remember, I said you really need to remember those linking verbs because if it's a linking verb, it's a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. A predicate nominative is a noun or pronoun that remains the, renames the subject. Try switching it with the subject. Excuse me. A predicate, predicate adjective is an adjective which describes the subject. Try putting it in front of the subject. Read the subject, verb, and complements together to make sure they make sense. So this gave you a couple different sentences to look at. So let's, and it's, it did the step-by-steps with them. So let's look at those, the green box on page 285. I hope you're looking in your book and not just looking at me going, what is she talking about? If you look in your book, you're going to know. All right. See how the steps were followed with these sentences on page 285. The sentence was, Jen recovered from her illness quickly. Well, you need to put parentheses around from her illness. That's a prepositional phrase, from her illness. From is the preposition, the direct object in the prepositional phrase is illness. So that's the whole prepositional phrase. Recovered is the verb, because you can recover from something. Who recovered? Jen recovered. So Jen is the subject. Recovered is the verb. From her illness is the prepositional phrase. Jen recovered what? No answer, because the last, the only other word in the sentence is quickly. Jen recovered whom? So quickly tells how. The sentence contains no complement. So that has no complement you have to worry about. Look at the third one. It says, I mean the second sentence. Matt told me the score. 
Well, you can go ahead and look. There is no prepositional phrase there. But told is the verb. Because can't you tell somebody something? Oh, that's an action verb. We're going to mind. We're probably going to have a compliment in here. But we have to look and see. All right. Who told? Matt told. Matt's the subject. Matt told me the score. So, Matt told what? What did he tell? He told the score. So, score answers what? Therefore, score is a compliment. Look, told is not a state of being or sometimes linking verb. Therefore, it is an action verb. Matt is performing the action of telling. Since told is an action verb, score is a direct object. Me is a pronoun between the action verb and the direct object. I can say, Matt told to me the score, therefore me is an indirect object because the indirect object comes before the direct object. So Matt is the subject, told is the verb, me is a pronoun, the indirect object, the score, score is your direct object. So you might have to go with that a couple more times if you need to read it yourself a little more. The next sentence says, Mr. Smith will be my sister's math teacher in the fall. Well, let's see how they broke it down. It's on page 286 now. Mr. Smith will be my sister's math teacher in the fall. Well, in the fall is a prepositional phrase. In is the preposition, the prepositional phrase ends with fall. Fall was the direct object in a prepositional phrase. Not the direct object, the object. All right, will be is my verb. Well, can you will be something? I like to try to see you try if you say yes. Will be, can you do that? All right, who, so who will be? Mr. Smith will be. So Mr. Smith is the subject. Mr. Smith will be what? He's going to be the teacher. Teacher answers what? Therefore, teacher is the complement. B, the last verb in the verb phrase, is on the state of being verb list and is followed by a complement, which renames the subject. Therefore, B is a linking verb because it's renaming the subject, Mr. Smith, as the teacher. Mr. says teacher is a noun which renames Mr. Smith. Teacher is a predicate nominative. So Mr. Smith will be teacher. Teacher is the predicate nominative. All right, now I want you to work on think, um, think at the bottom of this page. You need to, it says use those five steps we just went over to do. Um, it says follow the five steps. See if you can find the correct subject verb and complement for these sentences. So, go over those steps again. I can go ahead and tell you that well, actually there's only one sentence with an indirect and a direct object. There's two sentences with a prepositional adjective and there's one sentence with a preposition nom nominative. Not a preposition. A predicate adjective and a, pre a pre predicate nominative. So I kind of give you a little help on there, but I'm not going to tell you which sentences. So, if you have any questions or concern, that was a lot to take in. Please let me know. Call, text. We can do a Zoom conference one on one if we need to see each other's face. Okay, bye.